everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, bringing you another adventure game review, this time on a beloved franchise, Nancy Drew. If you aren't familiar with the eponymous character, though I'm not sure that's even possible given her popularity, she was created by Edward Stratton Meyer as a female equivalent to the Hardy Boys. She was developed in 1930, and the original Nancy Drew mystery books began that same year. They were published until 2003. To call the franchise popular would be an understatement. Like most young adult fiction books, the Nancy Drew character got her own TV series, movies, and video games. A surprising amount of the latter, which is what I'll be talking about today. Specifically, I'm going to be reviewing The Curse of Blackmore Manor from 2004, which is the 11th game in the series developed by Her Interactive. I had no idea there were this many Nancy Drew games, let alone good ones, this one included. I must warn you though, the character animations leave something to be desired. As we load up the game, we are greeted by some pretty solid music. It actually gave me a lot of hope that it would be a legitimately good mystery game. Always nice to start out on a good note. Heh, <laughs> note! You can either choose to play as a senior detective or a junior detective, and if you're new to adventure games, there's also some instruction. I decided to do senior detective because I am a cocky biatch and adventure game goddess, which admittedly was a mistake because this game is hard. Dear Ned, greetings from jolly old England. Although right now I'm not so sure about the jolly part. The story goes something like this. The daughter of one of Nancy's neighbors got married to a British diplomat named Hugh Penvillain and moved into Blackmore Manor with him, his aunt, Mrs. Drake, and his daughter, Jane. You cannot convince me that this is not Megan Trainer. I wonder if she's bringing any booty back. As Nancy explains the plot, I can't help but notice she sounds like a 30-year-old. I can't tell whether the butterflies in my stomach are because I'm excited or just a tad creeped out. She also sounded very familiar, so I looked up her list of credits. She's a very prolific voice actress, with her most important role clearly being Erico Christie from that Dreamcast classic, Ill Bleed. It sounds too good to be true. Linda, the new wife, has come down with some kind of ailment and has been bedridden since she moved into the manor, so her mom sends Nancy there to do some investigating. As we approach the estate, this happens. Nancy. Holy shit! Okay, I can get into this. We're welcomed by Mrs. Drake, Hugh's peevish 80-year-old aunt, who looks like she's still in her 50s due to the magic of underwhelming 3D design and some great Franken hair. We go up to our room and the puzzles commence. This game reminds me slightly of Titanic Adventure Out of Time with its first-person design and detailed backgrounds, sans the weird lip sync, which has been replaced with odd lip sync. The first thing I did was check out my amazing phone, which can be used to access the internet for figuring out puzzles, and there's also a few contacts you can call like Linda's mother. The second thing I did was use the room phone to order food, because if there is ever a chance I get to see some delicious adventure game food, I'm going to take it. Nancy Drew, out at the old Blackmore Manor, are you? Coo, you must be Ank Marvin up there. Pity about your kitchen, but we'll fix you up for some Bex and Posh. Just tell me what you'd like. <laughs> this guy reminds me of Bert from Mary Poppins. They are laying on the Cockney accent thick. Comical poem, suitable for the occasion, extemporized and thought up before your very eyes. All right, here we go. I'm not certain if this game is making fun of British people or not. There's a lot of refined English lady speak and jargon I'm not sure anyone actually says. Okay, seriously, who actually says Pip Pip? If you say Pip Pip to people, let me know in the comments because I'm fairly certain no one says that shit. Besides, isn't it Pip Pip Cheerio, not Cheerio Pip Pip? Is he calling me Pip Pip? Right, I'm putting way too much energy into this, moving on. Good. Cheerio. The puzzles are a combination of logic, interrogation, inventory, and bullshit. Do you have any spiders? Go dig. I solved a few easy ones before I decided to explore the manor, which looks big and overwhelming at first, but it's really only a few rooms that I got used to pretty easily. Hey, what's that thing? Oh, it's nightmare fuel. Awesome. First stop, Linda's room. Uh, I'm not going in there. This is scarier than the weird glowing eyes we saw outside. Look at the ominous furniture. It should be noted that first person games scare the crap out of me. So yes, mist is frightening to me. When there's a third person character, one I can see on the screen, it feels like I have company with me. When it's just me, I feel like something is gonna pop out right in front of me. That being said, even though this game is obviously trying to creep out the player, there aren't any egregious jump scares, just evil looking chair covers. So Linda is in her bed, obscured by a curtain, and refuses to let me see her. On her bedside table, there is a mirror, a cell phone, and a bottle of lotion. 
what is going on here at night? She believes she has the Blackmore curse and on several occasions tells me to just leave. Anyway, I understand you feel an obligation to my mother, but trust me, there's nothing you can do. You're welcome to stay, but I strongly recommend that you go home as soon as possible. As I continued my exploration, I heard a familiar noise. <coughs> Could it be? Could it really be? <coughs> yes, it's a parrot. This is Lulu, an 80-year-old yellow-headed Amazon. Day equals night. Lulu's always right. <coughs> Oh god, it's realistic. Run! She works as the game's hint system in junior detective mode and helps you with a few puzzles in senior mode if you make her a yummy cake. A bird cake! One of the puzzles involves making a bird healthy snack. I used the internet to look up bird safe foods, then constructed a wonderful seed cake for Lulu. This was a highlight of the game for me. If you give her something that is unsafe for birds, she will die and you will lose. Oh, Lulu, no! Of course, there are several locked doors to be open as you solve the puzzles, though I must say, as a wise developer once said, Well, a locked door that cannot be opened is unfair to the players. I mean, they'll assume that it holds some significance. After Jane is done with her tutoring at 2 p.m., you can speak to her. And yes, there is a time mechanic. Events happen after you go to sleep, and you can push time along by using the alarm clock. Jane helps you with puzzles if you play mini games with her. And this is what I mean by bullshit puzzles. They're akin to children children's board and card games, and while some logic puzzles in this game are strategy based, these are not. You win a lot of these on pure luck, making some of them last forever. The worst offender came much later in the game, where I had to move this warrior around the board and attack each of these four gods. Problem is, as soon as you press the button to start the game, the first move is random and made for you. I died on the first move so many times. Do you even realize how many times I had to hear this soundbite? found out you can die in this game. And I don't mean by screwing up a puzzle, I mean you can outright get eaten alive by a man-eating plant. I wish I had recorded the look on my face when this happened because I was shocked. My jaw was agape and I was speechless. Other characters you can potentially run into are Ethel, Jane's tutor who comes from a long line of tutors for the Penvalin family, and Nigel, someone who is working on a book about the Penvalin family history. Ethel is just bizarre and honestly way too into the lore of Blackmore Manor, and Nigel seems to think he could strike it big with this book if he can find some juicy stories. I took a peek at Nigel's laptop for clues, as you do, and found his outline so phenomenally boring that I stopped reading it and tried my hand at this typing game. <laughs> It's real bad. This is a horrible typing game. In fact, I think this is making me actively worse at typing. As you go throughout the game, you learn of the very strange Penvalin family history, the secret rooms and hidden passageways of the manor, and the dreaded Blackmoor beast which roams the moor in search of blood. Who is making Linda sick? Why are her arms so hairy? Is Linda ashamed because she is so hairy? Don't be ashamed, Linda. Sometimes women are just hairy. Why is someone trying to scare us away from the estate? Why are Ethel and Jane chanting some weird ritualistic shit at 3.15 in the morning? Will this machine make me big? All these questions and more await you as you figure out the curse of Blackmore Manor. Now, as far as mystery games go, this one does a really nice job. I'm pretty impressed. There's an emphasis on lycanthropy, with several parts leading Nancy to read up on the behaviors and symptoms of weir beasts. Combine this premise with some of the interrogation aspects of the game, and it really reminds me of Gabriel Knight 2, The Beast Within. I'm pretty sure I had to read the exact same book on lycanthropy in both of these games. The puzzles, however, are hit and miss. I found some of them really intuitive, with some trial and error, and Nancy's phone provides resources for figuring them out as well, but as soon as I found a basement with different rooms, I was a little irritated. Even just figuring out the puzzles to get to the secret parts of the manor are a little on the complicated side. You can also imagine my sheer horror when I found a slider puzzle. Please take a second and sign my petition to stop slider puzzles from getting into adventure games. It's a small but worthy cause, one that will make a difference in the lives of many. 
I did, however, love questioning these characters, and reading about the strange family history was fairly engrossing. A lot of writing went into making this game interesting, and I think it was successful in that way. For a game targeted to adolescents, it had some very mature storytelling and difficult puzzles, and I respect that. I probably would have spent hours and hours trying to figure this all out when I was younger. It's also one of the scarier Nancy Drew titles in this series. The manor is haunted, there's allegedly a beast running around the moor, and some of the cutscenes are on the weird side. <laughs> Besides some of the irritating puzzles, I was also getting very impatient with how you navigate the setting. It's a point and click, so you just move the mouse in the direction you want to go, but some of the directions are not clear, and I found myself misclicking a lot. I got used to it a little bit as I went through the game, but for the duration, I mostly found myself annoyed with it. I do like that there's a routine to the game. Things change as days go by, characters have different things to say, you can interrogate or update them on new evidence you find, and honestly, the weird looking character models kind of grew on me after a bit. I mean, this isn't the best, but it's not the worst. It's better than a stick in the eye. The voice acting is really hit and miss. I think Nancy is fine despite sounding like a 30 year old, and Jane is also voiced really well. Mrs. Drake, however, <laughs> I don't know. She reminded me of the Countess Lavinia Waldorf Carlton from the Dagger of Amon Ra, and that is not necessarily a good thing. Oh, people are always seeing and hearing things on the moor at night, especially you Americans. Why don't you just go on up to your room? I think you're a rude girl who needs to learn some manners. The nerve going around accusing people of stealing paintings. But overall, I was impressed. I think the mechanics make it feel like a mystery game, and I liked the music, atmosphere, story, and Lulu. And the winner is Lulu! So this game gets a solid recommendation from me. Bye, bird. Bob's your uncle. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching my video on The Curse of Blackmore Manor, one of many Nancy Drew games developed by Her Interactive. If you're interested in more adventure game or murder mystery related content, then you are in the right place because I have many videos pertaining to murder mystery and old Sierra games. If you would like to support me more directly so I can go ahead and buy myself some McDonald's hash browns, then do consider becoming a patron of mine. It's the little things in life, am I right? Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.